Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add a set checkpoint in an endless game. I was creating a second chance or continue button for my endless game, but in Zach's example, he uses a platformer. And there's little subtleties that are different between a platformer and an endless game. Just to give, show you an example, my endless game is something like this. These are the two characters in the middle, and then they rotate. And actually, get a bad guy to kill me. And here you can see, this is the ready checkpoint. I've got to click before it goes away. And the set checkpoint has recorded my score. Now, first thing is I'm going to jump into this UI. This, this is where you restart checkpoint, type action. And you can pretty much follow everything in Zach's video on how to get this just, just right. It took me some time to figure it out. And even, even now, like it's doesn't even seem to be working, but it, but it does work. Like here it's not moving, but it, you just saw it and it worked. Here are the frames. And at the very end, I, I have that checkpoint uh, become super small and then change the opacity to zero. This leaves me the ability to not need a separate UI and keep the continue button in the game over UI. And then on the close, you just keep the opacity to zero. I do believe if you're playing the game and you know that button's there, you might be able to click on it, but you'd have to have watched this video to even know that. Okay, so set checkpoint, how did I do this? So first thing I did was I brought in an object and that object is we're going to call it set checkpoint and so this is the object and so just to be clear like what object you bring in really doesn't matter took this object that i made and i made this object specifically so that i can make it invisible i also have an invisible object but you cannot input invisible objects as objects which I guess makes sense. However, you can input invisible shapes as action. And so that's what I did. I created two invisible objects. Here they are. Set checkpoint and restart checkpoint. So here we go. Set checkpoint. Duration it doesn't need to be nine. It could just be one second. Chance of appearance, 100. Restart checkpoint. Restart checkpoint. All this information is pretty standard. So you need to take that set checkpoint. Actually, let's just do this. Take it, cut, cut or copy. And then you go into your object that you just imported. So in this case, it's called Kill Switch. Uh, that's from another game I was making. And you take it, and you put that right here in the middle. So now it's right there. Now, what I did was I took this object, changed it into a decoration, fixed. You put it in the middle, and then you add a spawner to it. And I made it spawn just pretty much about every second so that it captures every second of the gameplay. And if you look, it's exactly what I did to this one over here. And if you go into this one, you can actually even see that there's set checkpoint. So what that does is again, it continually catches the set checkpoint and stores it so that when you die, you have that value. Now, it's important that you keep it right there in the middle. So the main reason I put this in the middle is because before I had set the checkpoint to be included the points. So every time a meteor is destroyed, if the action is not in the middle where the endless game has its characters, you can possibly have the characters be restarted in a new place or a new location, which is not in the middle. And that is not the gameplay that I'm looking for. If you have any suggestions for tutorials, please let me know. If I can do it, I will. Till then, I'll see you next time.